is my pleasure, in the name of a grateful country, to present you with the Distinguished Service Medal for gallant and courageous service above and beyond the call of duty. Adjutant, dismiss the battalion. And in this death. Jerry, that was great. Oh, cut it out. What do you want to do? Give me the swell head? Oh, you should have a swell head. If you get another medal, you'll sink. How many have you got now? Too many. Hello, Jean. Hello, Terry. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jean. Oh, isn't it lovely? I've just written the grandest story about this. Hold it, Bob. Hold it. Now, Terry, you've got to listen to what I've written. All right. Lieutenant Terry Kent of the Coast Guard displayed courage, judgment, and resourcefulness in saving hundreds of lives in the face of overwhelming odds. How's that for a front page story? If I were your editor, I'd fire you for gross exaggeration. <laughs> Say, when do we eat? That's not a bad idea. Let's eat. Lieutenant Kent, a message from Commander Boyle, sir. That's all. Sorry, Jean. My leave's been canceled. I'm doing Commander Boyle's office in 30 minutes. Jim, I'm afraid you'll have to do the honor. Will I? It's a pleasure. Hey, what about me? All right, all right. Come on, Snapper. So long, Lieutenant Kent. Lieutenant Kent? The Air Patrol reports an unregistered private yacht lying off the 12-mile limit. See to it that she doesn't communicate with shore except through authorized channels. Yes, sir. There she is. Follow it. The Coast Guard. $500 if you lose that boat. He is trying to chase them in this fog. What about? Wait here for me. You have just had a visual demonstration of what the civilized world considers modern warfare. I'll now give you an idea of what the new disintegration gas will do for the country possessing it. Owing to the limited amount of gas we've been able to manufacture, the demonstration will necessarily be brief. 
But, gentlemen, it will be sufficient to prove it is of definite value in organized warfare. Watch. The men you see are equipping the plane with several of these specially prepared bombs, the total weight of which is little more than 10 pounds. plane in the picture could easily carry several hundred times the weight of those few bombs, enough to completely destroy any of the world's largest cities, New York, London, Paris, or Berlin. The disintegration gas is so destructive, it may only be compressed into glass chambers. Behold the power of the disintegrating gas. The entire demonstration took place within eight minutes. This disintegration gas looks like the handiwork of Borov. If I didn't have reason to believe Borov dead, I would say he was in back of it. Were Borov alive, he wouldn't dare show his face in this country. Who is the man behind this? I'm unable to disclose his identity, gentlemen. Let it be sufficient to state that the gas is available for your country, should you decide to close the deal. I'm certain we can come to terms. But my government would feel more confidence if it knew the identity of the man with whom it is dealing. I'm sorry I may disclose that. Explain to us the nature of this disintegration gas. The gas is radioactive. Its base is the mineral, arnotite. Arnotite? <laughs> but arnotite is only found in the United States. One great chemical company owns it. Because arnotite is used so extensively in chemical warfare, the United States government controls it sale or shipment to other countries. We already possess the supply of arnotite, and we are prepared to smuggle it into your country where the gas can be manufactured. Order. No doubt you've heard that the emissaries from Morovania have accepted your proposition. I shall make preparations to leave at once. Dog the Napoleon brandy. I think the occasion demands a toast. Clumsy fool. This time tomorrow night, we'll find me and the cargo of Arnotite bound for Moravania aboard the SS Carfax.
Get me Lieutenant Kent. Lieutenant Kent. Yes, sir, at once. I suggest a shore rescue. Yes, sir. What is it? Oh, nothing. Some action. Yes, but you can't go. <laughs> Come on, Jim. There's a tramp aground at Cape Dune.
Get a stretcher. Jim. 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 Authorities will go to the wreck, discover that the kerosene on board the Carfax is not kerosene, but arnotite, being smuggled to Moravania. Besides, what about the agreement? Moravania will expect you to deliver the gas. You've already received money. Thug would like to cut my throat, wouldn't you, Thug? And why shouldn't he? He's never forgiven you for mutilating his mind. <laughs> Go ahead, Thug. Cut my throat. I never saw fear and love, dumb loyalty and consuming hate in such violent opposition in a single human. Thug isn't human, but he can be very useful. No one would know it. I have a great deal to accomplish. The Carfax is going to be investigated tomorrow and the Arnotite board must not be discovered. Here are my plans. to the reef. Just in time, too. A lot of strain on these, sir. Well, he'll be all right if another storm doesn't blow up. You men return to the ship. Boston, you stay here with me. What are you doing here? I heard there's to be an inspection of the Carfax the first thing in the morning. And, and you wanted a scoop for your paper. If there's a scoop to be had. <laughs> Perhaps we'll be able to uncover something concerning Borrow. I'll bring him to justice if it's the last thing I do. What do you make of it? It looks like the dredge near Boyer's Wharf, sir. Sound recall. All hands stand by for fire duty. We'll proceed there at once. Yes, sir. That's the recall. I'll have to return to the patrol boat at once. What's that mean? Something's up. I won't know till I get there. Does it? Certainly not. Stay as long as you like. Take care of yourself.
Hello. Done nothing, mister. Honest. Now listen, I've got connections. on the after section. Break out two more lines and bring them to numbers four and six plus. I go aboard immediately? Yes, you better do that. Yes, sir. The mooring cables have been cut. Pull up alongside.